And Chris is presenting the Caliber Tax Advantaged Qualified Opportunity Zone Fund. They invest in, uh, there's a multi-asset fund investing in real estate throughout the greater Southwest United States. Chris, there you are. How are you doing today? Hey, good, Jimmy. Good to see you. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. So I warned you in a private chat that we were running a few minutes behind. So I'll give you full 10 minutes and uh, it's your show. So please take it away. Yeah, man. It's been, uh, we've come a long way since we last saw each other or the first saw each other at the uh, SALT conference in, I think, 2018. That was, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of growth since then. So, yep. um, okay, everyone. So I got, I've got 10 minutes uh, to give you guys the proverbial drink through the fire hose uh, here. And a lot of you have already invested in our fund. Thank you for that. Um, I, I figured I would kind of try to merge together a quick update on where things stand with Caliber, along with you know some of the basics. If you don't know who we are and what we do, um, so a, as I spin through this, if uh, if it seems like I'm running fast, I am because I've got 10 minutes to talk. So we'll go pretty fast. Um, what is Caliber? What do we do? Why is it interesting? We are a real estate investment uh, firm based in the in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. We focus on what we a various sort of conglomerate of the Southwest and Mountain West region. And as of today, the company has about a billion dollars in a combination of assets under management and assets under development. We've actually sponsored seven uh, different discretionary private real estate funds, as well as about 15 syndicated offerings and single asset offerings in a different uh, deals and structures. And uh, behind all of that, we are a hands-on developer. So not only do we create the funds, raise the capital, manage the capital, acquire the assets, but we also make sure that the projects get executed on um, from start to finish. We have an in-house general contractor, we have an in-house real estate brokerage. And the way that we align all those things, um, you know, in terms of how do we manage the conflicts and deal with that is that everything we do is aligned towards creating a profit in the project and in the asset itself, which then um, delivers our profit sharing interest into our funds and into our investment strategies along the way. Um, I think that uh, when I think of Caliber and our business strategy at the end of the day, it boils down to one very specific concept in real estate and that we are a middle market real estate investment uh, uh, sort of opportunist. Um, and that means that we focus on projects between a five and $50 million deal size they're typically too large and too complicated for the entrepreneurial market to access. That's why you get this little U curve. And they're also too maybe small or too complicated for the institutional market to access. And so what that boils down to is when we go to bid on a project or buy a deal, we often are the only seat at the table or one of very few as compared to much larger projects and much smaller projects where there's a lot of people sitting at that table trying to buy and bid against you which makes it really hard to buy at a discount. Um, we focus on, like I said, the Southwest and Mountain West, which is Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, cities like Phoenix, Denver, Boise, Austin, Salt Lake City that are growing and that um, prior to the COVID pandemic, we're already experiencing this long-term trend of job growth and population growth. And since the pandemic have seen only an acceleration of that trend. When you think about our organization and as an investor coming into any one of our funds, you're coming in as a limited partner here uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in, that, in that space. Uh, coming into one of the funds, we have our Opportunity Zone Fund, we also have a core fund, an opportunistic real estate fund, a private lending fund. The fund itself owns the real estate, you own your proportionate share of the fund, and Caliber acts as your GP providing real estate services as well as earning a profit interest from when we get these properties to perform. Over 174 properties, the company's produced a 2.1 times equity, net equity multiple, that means net to the investor, over about a five-year period. So if you put in 100,000, you're getting about 210,000 back over a five-year period as a combination of your return of your capital, your rents, and your profit from the sale of the asset. And as an investor with Caliber in the, in the the overall structure of the company, you are becoming part of what we call the Caliber client community, which means that you get to interact with on a regular basis, high net worth investors who invest in private real estate deals, learn from each other, um, build relationships both with the management team at Caliber as well as the investor group that, that have invested with us. At that point, at this point in time, that's about 1100 investors 
who've invested over uh, $400 million in equity with us in different funds and structures and strategies and, and all that kind of stuff. So with that, five minutes time, we're going into the caliber opportunities on fund, quick update on where we stand. And I'm going to focus on a lot of strategy versus um, a lot of the structures, because I think that everybody here has probably heard enough about real estate, real estate fund structures. So first and foremost, here's a, a quote from Jim Barry. Um, Jim is basically saying in this quote that the opportunities that exist due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the disruption that's created in the private markets, especially the private real estate markets, has created the best buying opportunity since late 2008, which was the best buying opportunity in modern history to invest in real estate assets. Um, the bottom line for an opportunity zone investment is if you put a million bucks in an opportunity zone fund and you run it out at an 8% annual growth rate, considering the, the, the various taxes that you pay and don't pay and avoid, et cetera, you'll start with a million, you'll pay taxes in a, in a traditional investment, you'll exit with a million three after paying a second round of taxes and you'll make a $300,000 gain over 10 years. In an opportunity zone fund, the, the exact same metrics, you're looking to make a $900,000 gain over 10 years. So you're earning three times the profit um, of the original investment. In my opinion, there's three real things that matter to evaluate an opportunity zone fund. That's the infrastructure of the fund, the track record of the sponsor, and the, their access to deal flow. Um, all three of these things Caliber shines in. We have a tremendous fund infrastructure. The actual fund sponsor for, uh, for the entity is, um, is a public reporting company and has in-house a large group that manages the accounting, finance, tax, et cetera, uh, necessary to make sure that this fund is taken care of appropriately. We have a track record of success buying 10 to $50 million deals. And because of that, we're constantly being offered opportunities to invest in future deals because we've been in the market and we've been executing for the last 13 years. And then that drives deal flow. So at the moment, prior to the COVID pandemic in February, we were sitting on about $500 million worth of projects. We were in the process of acquiring or in an LOI stage or negotiating on. As of today, that number has ballooned to about $3 billion worth of projects. So we've seen our deal flow grow tremendously. And most of that has to do with the fact that there is disruption in the market. There's not a lot of players involved. And now is a great time to invest and be, um, uh, and, and be at the table, be transactional. Um, we are, like I said, focused on the greater Southwest. And I just want to hit on a couple of key topics here. One is, what is the strategy? Do I go single asset? Do I do one-off deals here and there? Our vision and our, 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 our view is that you do a diversified multi-asset fund. Why do you do that? Well, it, because it drives better exit strategies. We have the ability to um, acquire uh, larger groups of assets, which gives us the ability to, instead of just unwinding the fund by selling off one property at a time, we can sell off in a portfolio sale. We can roll up our fund into an upreit and take the, the fund public vis-a-vis -vis an IPO transaction. And the only reason why you do all those types of things is because if your investment was worth a million when you came in and it's worth two, two and a half million, 10 years down the road, which is hitting our key assumption, then why would you sell it via an IPO to a REIT or why would you sell it via portfolio? Well, maybe you could sell that investment for 3 million or 4 million because the, the markets at those types of assets give you a better exit um, on, your, on your capital and they'll buy your investment at a better cap rate or, or, or lower return expectation because it's in a liquid investment or a public company or something like that. So I think that rolling out, diversifying your risk over many different projects and building a large portfolio gives you the most flexibility on the exit and hopefully the biggest possible tax advantage as well. And it also mitigates your risk, growth and concentration in assets and in markets. Um, our target IRR is 13%, which is not inclusive of the um, tax advantages to you. And we're targeting a two and a half times multiple net to you. Uh, just a little bit of a representation of our projects. I'll go into one. We acquired an a, a assisted living facility that was defunct and boarded up at the time renovated the property, put $11 million in the project. We're into it for 23. We've got a lease on the property for 20 years, starting at $2.4 million in net income per year, which is a 10.5% cap rate on costs. 
and the property in our view is worth about $34 million today. So that one just got done, tenant took occupancy about three months ago, and it's an example of the types of projects that we do in the world of real estate investment. We're offering uh, up to $500 million in equity in the fund, doing about a billion dollars worth of deals, which is our project, uh, our target. We have a 6% preferred return with a catch up over an 80-20 split if you have a million dollar minimum investment or a 75-25 split if you have a $250,000 minimum investment. The funds audited by Deloitte uh, was written by Snell and Wilmer with Mark Schultz, who some of you guys know if you follow the Opportunity Zone space, he's an expert in the world of Opportunity Zones. And uh, we have, a, like I said, a tremendous infrastructure to administer the fund and distribute the capital. So with that, 10 minutes is done, Jimmy. Um, do you wanna go to any Q&A or do we, have, uh, do we have time for that? Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, we, we don't have time for Q&A right now. I don't see a lot of questions either. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you one though. What's, what's your exit strategy really quick here? And then we'll, we'll break for lunch and get the fun breakout sessions open. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, worst case scenario, we, we put the fund into an un, 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 unwinding period and we start selling off the assets one by one. Um, having said that, we think that there's going to be much better exits for us. Um, Caliber is a public reporting company at the moment, and so we think that sponsoring uh, a public REIT and rolling up the assets in the REIT is probably the best possible exit. It gives the investor the flexibility to sell their shares on the public markets when they want to sell. So some people want to get out in 10 years, fine. Some people might be getting a nice distribution from the cash flow and say, I'd like to hold for 15 years. The longer you hold up to that 27 year period at this point in time, the longer you can protect yourself from paying taxes on the exit. So many of our investors that have invested are looking at a 15, a 20, a 30 year exit, and we're gonna give them some flexibility to do that through this public exit. Awesome, well, thank you, Chris. Thanks for your presentation today. Thanks for joining me once again. And uh, thanks for all your support of Opportunity DB over the years. We've, we've been industry friends for, for a couple of years now, dating back to that first time we met a couple of years ago. So no, thank you, uh, Jimmy. You are the leading voice, man. You're out there, <laughs> you're getting it, giving the word out there. And that's what people need is education right now. So thank you so much for what you do. Awesome. Well, thank you for the kind words. And with that, uh, we are going to break for lunch here on the main session.